well, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the hell is all the hype about. So I went on my Spotify and I was listening to like some of her songs. I was like, Anti Hero's a little bit of a jam. Sip and Chat Cafe. Welcome to Sip and Chat Cafe, Ooh. a safe space for stimulating conversations. No topic is off limits. If it matters to you, it matters to us. I'm your host, Atara G, and our producer, Motown Maurice. For information about this podcast and more, please visit MotownMaurice.com. So in 2020, during the lockdown, I, uh, I was invited to be part of a unique experience. I was on a game show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a game show called Get a Clue. Oh and my team included Motown. Yay. And our guest today, Corey. Yay! That was so fun. <laughs> that was fun. Do oh, you? Man. I actually have a trick question for you. Okay. Do you remember our um, team name? So I was trying to remember it the other day. So it was something about food initially, right? Like the 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 snack pack or something, and then it changed. What <laughs> we looked it up this morning. What was it? What was it? The Bible again? thumpers. The Sunshine Bun. Oh my gosh, that's right. It did. It was. I was like, Corey bunch. picked that because there's no <laughs> way I would pick that. <laughs> and I just went with. Oh it. my gosh, that's hilarious. I have to apologize. In your intro, I like cheered a little bit, so <laughs> no, there might be a sound. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I apologize. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I'm so, I'm glad, so glad you're here. here. <laughs> and it's so funny that I'm here to talk about. You're here to talk about obsession. I mean, because just a little bit. I mean, we think of obsessions as like a bad thing, but you're not, you're actually not a bad thing. You're a very great thing. Thank you. And you've got two very interesting obsessions. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have several, but I'm going to tamp it down to just two. Oh, okay. So you're an obsessive then. So, okay. So what had happened was when I get excited about something, I get very excited about it. So... <sighs> Yeah, and if I'm not excited, it shows on my face. Really? Yeah. When I don't like things, I um, I'm one of those people where if if I really don't like something, you'll see me just kind of like stare off because I know if I don't, it's on my face. Oh, it's very apparent. Dang. But well, when I'm excited, it's like ah, no poker playing for you. No, you don't have a poker face. No, I will lose all the time, <laughs> I'm like a puppy. Well, well, let's get into your first obsession. All right, cool. Which is something that I'm very familiar with because my brother, my mom, and I also grew up with this. We weren't <gasps> obsessed about it, but just like you, at the grocery store, we always picked up a couple and we'd come home and Shut we'd sit around up. and read them together. Oh my gosh, and then when we were so done, we had, we'd hand them off. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Oh my so gosh. So I, I actually very much, I know about the double digest. I, all my I, life I too have my favorite characters oh. I too have my opinion what yeah I had no clue this was going this way I'm so <laughs> geeked right now you have no idea oh my gosh so folks if oh you God. haven't figured oh out we're talking about Archie, Archie freaking comics <laughs> The greatest <laughs> comics on the face of the earth, Archie Comics. See, I should have known because you. When I mentioned, uh, oh, okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Go, go, just go. No, no, go ahead. Because when you, I said earlier, so I love Archie Comics, but Archie's trash. Like Archie himself, utter trash, utter trash. And you agreed, and I was like, did she read them at some point? Because most people, if you don't read Archie Comics, you think, oh, Archie's this great guy. He's this. He's, he's that. Not. Archie is trash. He's trash. He's your typical privileged guy who has a great best friend and these two girls who just love and adore him, yep. who do anything for yep. him. One who clearly really cares for him. Clearly. One who clearly is just using him. Clearly. Of course, he wants to chase the one who is using him and use the one who really cares about him as a backup. All day. L Trash. Trash. Archie. But here's the other thing, though. The more I've been reading them, it also depends on who's writing the story. Mm. If you notice, the stories where Archie is with Chuck, the only black person in the Archie verse, Chuck and his girlfriend Nancy, they get better. Like we get more black people more recently. But all the the my favorite ones with Archie are when him and Chuck are like, um, on like a secret mission to either like um, if there's like some 
thugs that they have to like go up against, or mm-hmm. if there's like an athletic competition, the 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 are the the storylines where he's with Chuck Archie's awesome. He's very noble. He's like more sensitive. Usually, he's like dating Betty in those. If if they do have a love interest pop up, so it's something. When well, he got the brother with him, Archie acts right. So, but <laughs> that's interesting. When did Chuck show up? Because I don't ever like I stopped reading Archie comic books probably in my freshman year of high school, which is when I moved to live with my dad. What so? Chuck showed up, I want to say, in the 70s, but if you're reading Digest, and this is one of the things I love about the Digest, depending on what you pick up, the Digests are from so many different eras. It's not just like one year. You don't get Chuck all the time. Yeah, I don't recall Chuck because we were reading, yeah, like these. Wait, where is, I I just, wait, okay, so I brought my Digest. I brought, they also have double digest. I did not bring a double. Oh, I did bring a double digest. So the digest, Uh double digest. And now more recently they have the jumbos. The jumbos. Okay. But here's Chuck. So that's Chuck. Oh, maybe I did remember Chuck. Yes. How's it going, Archie? If I were a pinball machine, I'd read Tilt. (laughs) So corny. Like, but I I love it. It It was so So wholesome and such a, just a great way to escape yeah. from like life yeah. traumatic episodes as a high school person. See, there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Archie. You're the greatest and the worst. Yeah, he's he, he's worst. He's mm, go I ahead. thought it was interesting how cuz you know they always say blondes have more fun. I think they reversed the They way. did. Like, I kind of like that though. Yeah, I'm glad I kinda that like they made, that. they yeah. kind of made like Betty the not the doormat, but like yeah, she wasn't a doormat, but she was the fun one. Yeah, the, I'll do anything for you, Archie. You can always count on me. Mm-hmm. And then Veronica with the dark hair is like you know this dark haired Raven Vixen who's just like wealthy and using Archie yeah, for all the dough for all his stuff. Exactly, and that and so and so this is where oh, I love Archie comics so much. So. <laughs> We've got the Archie and the Jughead and the Betty and Veronica. And I love that you always have to say Betty and Veronica in that order. Exactly. There's actually um, a, a comic strip where they talk about that, where Veronica's like, why do they always say your name first when talking about Betty and Veronica? Um, but where, yeah, Veronica's the raven-haired beauty. And when she's first introduced into the Archie comics in the 40s, um, she's a debutante from out of town mm-hmm. who comes into Riverdale for like a dance or something like that because Archie writes her a note and then passes it off as if Jughead wrote the note. And so then she comes to go on the date with Jughead. Like, I can't remember if he says like, I'm dying or something. It's some crazy cockamamie story that he does to bring her in. And then she's like, I think I'm going to like it here in Riverdale. And she decides to like stay, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and so like, that's, that's pretty much exactly. how it is. Um, but what's crazy is like, because the digest, they take from the comic. So the, if you have a comic, so I keep bumping into this. The comic is usually going to start like follow like a storyline. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the digests are a hodgepodge of that, so they're not as like consistent with they're consistent with personality things and certain key things about the characters, but it's not consistent in the fact of like what might happen in like day to day life. So there might be one Archie where Veronica is all up on Archie and is sweet and loving and is just so into him, and then in the next one. She's like going out with three different people. Yeah. And it's like, Archie, I'll just see you when I see you. So that was my experience because we were yeah. not reading the comic books. We were reading the digest and yeah. the double digest. So I have a very like, Veronica to me is just like, ooh. She's trash. She's just like, she's trash. But can I tell you, so wait, not it's not my stripper name, but my alter ego name is Veronica Kit, which is a mix <laughs> of Veronica Lodge and Eartha Kit. <laughs> And so then I looked it up online, and there's actually an actress with that name already. So then I changed it to Kit Devereaux for like Blanche <laughs> Devereaux from the Golden Girls. Let me tell you. So when we would go out when I was younger, much younger, and like a guy would you know try to ask me my name and my number, I would tell him my name was Veronica. Yes! <laughs> it's the best. 
best day. It's the best Veronica. day. Well, what's your number? And then I would give him a number to Rite Aid in El Segundo. Stop it right now. That is so great. I know. It's terrible. I mean, chances are you probably need some sort of ointment for whatever <laughs> filthy thing he was trying to do for you anyway. So you're really helping him out is really what happened. So that's so funny. Oh my gosh. It's such a huge part of my growing up, these comics. I wish I had saved them all like you have. So I know you have an extens- yeah. extensive collection. Yeah. Where do you keep them? So like all the places. So if you, so there's some in my parents, crawl, like attic crawl space, not attic crawl space, like up in the garage. There's some in my old childhood bedroom in a box. There's some in my kid's room. Pretty much any place that I go, there's an Archie hidden so that I can either read it at some point or I need it for storage. Like currently there's an Archie in my husband's car. There's two, there's one. Yeah, there's two in his car. There's two to three in my car. There's about four in my kid's bedroom. There's two at my grandma Barbara's house. My grandma Z's house, I have them in the car. So when I go visit her, they're there. Cause if my grandma Z catches this, she'll be like, Corey, what is this? So I can't, I can't quite sneak them in her house just yet. Um, I keep them in my luggage so that when I go travel, I make sure that- That is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I keep it in my luggage. I have a bunch of, I'm obsessed with like purses from Goodwill. So like I have a couple stashed in my purse along with lactose intolerance pills because I'm very lactose intolerant. So like there's always a dairy emergency. So I keep- I keep the Archies everywhere, like Archies on deck. Because if there's ever an Archie emergency, they're there. What what would constitute an Archie emergency? Um, when they're not around, that's when it's an Archie emergency. <laughs> Are you like ever like, oh my gosh, I'm having such a bad day. I, I need to read Archie comics. You know what? It's funny. They they it unintentionally yes. Like they are very like. If I've been on my phone too much to the point where like my brain is starting to hurt and my right eye is twitching, I'm like, well, what's wrong? You're on your phone too much. Read an Archie mm-hmm. and calm down. And they soothe me. Like they really just like, and I think because it takes me back to my childhood and when I would sit on, my sister and I had twin beds in our room mm-hmm. and I would sit on the bed and the sun would come in and it was like this perfect light and I would eat like popcorn and drink lemonade and just go, just just get lost. And so it just gives me that like tranquil comfort and feeling. Um, and because it's like, it's, I, I don't know how to explain this. It takes me to a place where I'm not going to get into my theory on interdimensional lives and whatnot. Cause that's, I don't quite know what my theories are, but I think there's different stuff out there, man. <laughs> but like in my mind, there's Archie somewhere. Um yeah. And I don't even necessarily feel like I'm part of the Archie gang, but I'm just enjoying my popcorn, seeing Watching. what's going on with the guys. And and what's also great is there's so many, like, if you look at it as a TV show, there's so many spinoffs with mm-hmm. Archie. Like, what I have in front of you is you see Betty and Veronica Spectacular. This one just says Archie Comics. Mm-hmm. This says Pep. Mm-hmm. So Archie started in 1941, um, in issue number 22 of Pep Comics. Um, and so... But his character was so popular that he ended up getting his own like book. And the the company, I think it was called, I think it said MLJ Comics at mm-hmm. first or something like that. And then they went to become Archie Comics. And they have like so many spinoffs. Like you've got these that I mentioned. They have Everything's Archie, which they don't really do anymore. Jughead has his own um, comics. They did Laugh Comics mm-hmm. for a while with the Double Digest. They don't make those anymore. But then like, do you remember Lil Jinx, that character? Lil Jinx? I kind of do, yeah. Yeah, so she would be, she was from like, the, the her series ended I think in the 70s. Mm-hmm. But like, she was this little... Um, this little blonde haired little kid mm-hmm. who's like always getting into mischief. Tr- and like stuff. a Dennis the Menace. Yes, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, I love that. See? I love that. Yeah, I remember that. Exactly. And that, and so you've got those comics, and then Sabrina the Teenage Witch became a, that popular series. Um, even though they did not have the witches look like how they did in the comic strips. On Netflix. That's okay. Did you watch it? No, I didn't watch this. I watched first. it. It was good. Was it? See, okay. So here's my thing. So I'm like a, a hokey old lady. So 
because I'm like, this isn't like the series. I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> but I have heard that it's good. It is so okay. good. And they do a good balance of like the light and the dark of okay, that character. Okay. It's really good. Now, is it overly like sexualized and stuff? No. Okay, so now I might give it a chance. I don't like seeing stuff for like teenagers or boning that, that creeps me no, out as an adult. Like, I don't want to see all that. But. It's not over sexualized. Okay. I mean, there's okay. like se- sex innuendo and stuff like that but gotcha yeah no outright blinking okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> such a great word so so speaking of the series i know that there was huh. wasn't there uh, an archie series okay wait uh-huh. uh, i'm not sure what you so yes there are archie series if you're talking about the comics yes they had cartoons there was like uh-huh. everything's archie was actually mm-hmm. a cartoon in the 60s i want to say um, they actually had a radio series at one point. Um, then they have Archie's Weird Mysteries, which um, is another cartoon from like the 90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. They had um, the new Archie's, which came out in the 80s. So I didn't even know about the new Archie's uh, until I had started. You didn't? Did you know about the new Archie's? No, I did not watch. I only know Archie from the Double Digest and the Digest. I have not watched any of the cartoons or animation or anything like that. They're really cute. They're super corny, um, but I mean, it's Archie, so it's to be expected. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the cartoon, um, the new Archie's, it was a cartoon first. And then from that cartoon, they made, um, they they had like a short-lived um, set of those. And I had one, but I, I couldn't find it to bring it in. Um, and that you can tell like the animation style is like a lot different. Mm-hmm. They have this character, um, these characters, Eugene and Imani. The other black characters, Chuck and Nancy are not in those. They have Eugene yeah, you and can Imani tell, instead. Like, you could tell you went from Chuck and Nancy to Eugene and Imani. Yes, yeah, right? Like, look, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's when it's more, yeah. a little more 80s, 90s, yeah. okay? Not the 60s. Um, but Chuck and Nancy are the ones that like they stay through even now. They're still um, in the series. Um, I thought you were about to talk about the TV show. That oh, is, there was a TV show? No. So, no, no, it's not a TV show that is Archie. The show Riverdale that they claim is based on the Archie characters, but it's not. I, oh. Is it animated or is it people? No, dude, it's like humans. It's like <laughs> real people. And I know a lot of people love that show. So you took your glasses off because you we were about to go in. So I'm going to try not to. So, so time out. So my husband was like, Corey. If you talk about Riverdale, you need to calm down because you get too excited and you don't want people hating you because of your feelings on Riverdale. Because here's the thing. It's trash. It's utter trash. And I've never watched the episode, but it's trash. So how can you say a show is trash? You've never watched it. As a TV show, it's probably good, entertaining television show. Mm-hmm. I'll give it that. It's probably great TV for if you like that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But to call it a show based off the Archie characters? Really? So no. tell, I, I've never heard of it. I've never seen the trailer. Very fortunate. What what upset you so much about the trailer? Um, it bothered. I was really excited at first when I saw it because it was like kind of doing like a darker spin, a darker take. And I know that that's like a thing. They have Mm -hmm. different comics in the Archie verse. Like they have Archie Afterlife that I read. Um, that was came out in like 2013, which is like this zombie thing happens. And then they've got Vampronica where Veronica is like a justice wielding vampire. And then they have the, I think it's called the hunger where Jughead is a werewolf. It's, and those are like banging. I didn't think I'd like those, but they're really yeah, good. I, I'm wondering if I would, maybe the werewolf one. Yeah. It's, 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 it's actually very good. But what they did was even though they made it like different, like a whole different type of Archie verse. Cause they'll call it like the Archie verse mm-hmm. when it's something totally different. They stay true to the meat of who the characters are. Because Veronica, even though she be trifling, her heart is good. She's just trifling a lot of times. She would actually make a really good vampire. Yes. See, you could see it. I could see her. Because she already sucks the life out of Archie anyway. (laughs) Exactly. Why not go ahead and take his blood? (laughs) Exactly. So it works. So that works. But Riverdale, from what I saw from the trailer and then like other reviews, and I was like, well, maybe I should give it a try. And I tried to look... I just couldn't. So first of all, Betty is uh, addicted to like Adderall or something. And oh no, they did not. And guess what? Jughead is an emo, emo, emo. What's what's the thing the young kids are when they're like emotional? Over Gen Z, no, Gen X? no. It's 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 a it's a. And I'm not oh, trying emo. to be mocking. Like, yeah, emo. I did say it. Okay. Emo. 
They, there's yeah. A emo music, email yes. dress. Yes. So apparently Jughead is just kind of like sullen like that. That's not, Jughead is sleepy all the time. He always wants to sleep. So they're reinterpreting. Yes. Okay. So perky, bubbly Betty is only perky and bubbly because she's at Adderall. Yes. And guess who's dating in that series? Who? Jughead and Betty. Really? Yeah, they make them date. Now, first off, if you read Archie comics, like the the real ones, you know that Jughead, first off, don't like girls. He does, yeah. And Betty and uh, Veronica can't, thinks Jughead is ridiculous. Right. And it, what they do, even in like the later Archies, like in the 70s and 90s, which is great, you kind of see this friendship develop between Betty and Jughead. So they become like, he's Jughead at some point starts being like, an ally for Betty and being like, well, if you're going to go out with anyone, Archie, it should be Betty. Betty's this, Betty's that. So in one way, if Archie like girl, I mean, Jughead like girls like that, sure, maybe he'd go for Betty. But no, 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 no. So so, so what they, they shouldn't have said it was based on the characters exactly, of Riverdale. Exactly. They should have said we're borrowing from the storyline, but we're going to mess it all up. The, it, yeah, I love you so much. <laughs> That's this what is... they should have said. Oh, these just look, there's nothing, they they act yes. nothing like the Archie characters. They just look like them. Yes. And we're taking it because we're not creative enough to come up with new we... content. That's what Spill they should have just said. And Archie sleeps with Miss Grundy. What? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you made. Can I tell you, you have no idea how long I have longed to talk to someone about this who would understand. Yes. Old Miss Grundy is like a young hot thing and she be tooting it up for Archie, apparently. I'm appalled. Right? It's it's like I'm appalled. Just don't just don't just just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Why does Hollywood have to touch everything and leave it make alone. it disgusting? Yeah. And it, it 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 what it did, it really hurt because literally I've been like since eight years old, like reading these comics. And it, it took something. And yeah, Archie, it, it, the girls be in like bikinis half the time and the guys got their short and everyone's hot for each other. They're teenagers. You're going to mm -hmm. have hormones. I get that. I'm not saying they need to be like Puritans or anything, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like that. And so now there's a Riverdale comic and I I tried to read it. It was it was just like whatever, but it's a comic based on the series and so I was like, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get into this at all. Um, and if someone likes the show, then cool. Like, it's it's just not for me. So you love Archie Comics. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I do. So much. You love the cartoons. I do. They're really sweet. Yes. And I just love cartoons in general. And it's so, and you're a voiceover actress. I am. Yes, I am. So it's what <laughs> attracts you to the cartoons, the voiceover aspect? You, so it's funny that you asked that because yes. So when I was a little girl, my dad and I would like kind of play this game where we would watch cartoons together and we would see a character and he would, we let's say we're watching a show and then watch another show because we'd watch a lot of cartoons together and he'd go, okay, well, you hear this voice? Where have you heard that voice before? Who did that voice? So I would be like, oh, well, Daffy Duck sounds like Bugs Bunny. And Bugs Bunny also sounds like Elmer Fudd. And so that's when I learned about Mel Blanc, who is like the man of a thousand voices. Like he's, oh, he's like my hero. And then when I was would watch cartoons on my own, I started noticing something because I liked Inspector Gadget as a kid. Mm. And so on Inspector Gadget, there's his niece, Penny. And so I would like hear Penny's voice. And then I would notice on like other stuff, I was like, I feel like I'm hearing Penny's voice again. And you know the show A Different World? Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, now I really hear her voice because Freddie on A Different World, who is freaking Cree, freaking <laughs> Summer, is like the voiceover goddess of our generation, of all the generations. Mm -hmm. When you were a kid, any little black girl's voice that you heard, it was Cree Summer. I did not know that. I yes. didn't even know she did voiceover oh but now gosh, thinking of so her awesome. as that character yeah i can totally see it yeah i can totally see it so she's all the things code name kids next door um Susie carmichael from the rugrats is her oh. yeah she's Susie carmichael she's um there's a show called word girl that was on pbs um mm -hmm. and she but she was the grandma on that show i, I cannot do a Cree summer voice i that that was horrible <laughs> i'm so sorry Cree. i love you but you yeah can so that's interesting to me. So even though she was doing a different voice, you could still hear her? Yes. So what I had learned, and I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional, but my dad basically, he taught me like when you're, like when you can hear certain similarities mm -hmm. um, 
in certain things. Cause like a, a good voiceover artist, like they're really good at like changing their voice where it's almost like seamless, where it's like all of a sudden they're a whole nother character. <laughs> and then you just don't know what's good to happen. But, <laughs> but the cool thing about it is like, you still hear their essence. And so with Cree Summer, her essence still comes through. Her energy comes through. Um, and she has this amazing, like, if a three-year-old was a chain smoker, raspy voice that, and I mean that as like the highest praise, like she has this delicious, oh, like rasp to her voice that is very signature um, because it's just a part of her voice, Mm -hmm. but it's also so light and airy and like fun. And so the cool thing about her is like, when you hear her, she's able to literally go from like little kid to old woman to like sexy grown woman Mm -hmm back to a child like there's this show oh gosh I don't even know the name of the show but my best friend Bill was telling me about I have like several best friends and Bill is one of my best (laughs) friends like that's my dog but he was like you know Cree Summer is on that new dating show she plays like an an obelisk or she she's like the the voice on this one like um Dating by the Signs or something mm-hmm. reality Astrology show. Astrology dating or something. Something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's her voice. And then if you remember the cartoon movie Atlantis starring Michael J. Fox when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, she's Kira. The, um, wow. I'm going to have to Google her. This yes. It's really interesting. And that was the, 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 the moment for me. Like I was a kid in the theater. Oh, it makes me want to cry. And I'm watching it. I'm pretty sure I was with my dad watching the movie or my mom. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. And she, the character comes up on screen and she's got like this like brown skin and this like these ice blue eyes and this like white hair. And she was like powerful and magnificent and beautiful. And she opens her mouth and I'm like, that's Penny. That's that boy. That's her. That's, that's a, that's a black lady doing that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know how old I was. I don't remember, but it was just like, okay, this is, she, she, she's it. Like she is it. Is that the moment you knew you wanted to be a voiceover actress? It was the moment that I felt like I could be. Mm-hmm. I had always wanted to be. And it was something that I was like, I'm going to do it. I want to do this. But when I actually saw her do it, it was like, oh, so we are doing it now. Yeah. Because I hadn't fully, because in my mind, it was just Mel Blanc and June Foray. June Foray is like during the same time when Mel Blanc was doing stuff with Looney Tunes, because he was also, um, Barney Rubble on um, mm-hmm. the Flintstones. Mm-hmm. He did all. Oh, that's my dog. He does mm-hmm. all the things. That's a great voice, too. It's, right? Yeah. So great. And so June Foray was like the witch on the Looney Tunes. Um, and she did a ton of other voiceover things as well. Um, so those were like my role models. And they're awesome. But it also helps to have like a black woman that you're like, oh, dude, you're doing this too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So she, it was more of, it's not that she, 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 ins, she inspired me with voiceover in a lot of ways. And so random side note, I actually like got to see her. Uh, yeah, randomly. Where? Like at this. So oh, I think the place was called <laughs> I want to say it was a bar and they have like this brown sugar burlesque show that was like really, really good. It was. Girl, was she dancing or she was just there? I wish. No, that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not looking at her like that, but I love her. But um, but no, but the women who were there, I was like, okay, I need to go exercise because they got it on point. Um, but no, she was um, she was just there having a good time. Huh. And I like saw her through the crowd and my cousin was like, is that crazy summer? And I'm like, it is. <laughs> did you go speak to her? I did. So I didn't want to bother her, but she uh-huh. was walking right past my table and I got up and I would like walk next to her and she had a lady with her and I felt, and I wasn't trying to like be rude or, so I was like, excuse me, I just, if I can just tell you something. And I just told her how much I appreciated her Aww. and how much I loved her. And she was so kind and so gracious. And it was just like, like a quick little, like That's 30 so seconds. Nice. It was, it was very nice of her. Like I really appreciate it. And her friend was real cool. Like, you know, she just let me chat with her. And then girl, oh, so she hugged me and she spoke in my right ear and just thinking about, I heard her voice and it is crazy to hear a voice that you have loved from afar because we're in a, in a, like a bar. So it's loud. So she had to lean in and she was like, thank you. I really appreciate it. And it was like my eardrum like <laughs> melted. I'm like, it is Cree Summer's voice. And she's talking to you she's this to time. She's to me. Yeah. She's, she is like, 
Do in you, her voice. Yes. Yeah. And it was weird to hear. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. It was weird. I'm so excited. It was weird <laughs> to hear her her regular speaking voice because I always hear her as characters and on a different world. She's playing Freddie and it's her voice, but it's a little higher. Mm -hmm. And so just to like actually her, and it was really buttery. Like her voice is, it's really smooth. And I wasn't expecting it to be like as smooth and but I just, I love it. But just mm -hmm. that, but it, girl, it was one of those moments where I'm like, <laughs> well, Lord, if you take me now, I've completed everything <laughs> in life that I actually need. So thanks. But yeah, she's, and then like, she just seems like real cool and her whole little vibe. It's just. Man, okay, I'm gonna stop because I I'm gonna sound like a crazy person, but she's when, all. When the did things. you? When was that? When you saw her? This was like recently. Oh, yeah, like last weekend. Oh, yeah. This was it was. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, it was last. It was last weekend. It was last weekend. Did you? Was it before or after you knew you were coming on the podcast? This was. Was it before? It was. It was after I knew I was coming on the podcast, but before I knew what we were gonna talk about. So, so it was like, yeah, yeah. It was just like, so when I was talking to uh, to Motown about it, uh -huh. hey Mo, I was <laughs> like, oh, I was like, oh wait, and I did just meet Chris Summer, by the way. Like, <laughs> just throwing that in there. It's so perfect how everything is uh, lined up. It really is. It is. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank you. It was great. It was. Oh, she's the best. So, oh, dang it. So if this, I so now I really have to tell Bill because I've purposely been hiding the fact that I've met her. From Bill? Yes, because I want to tell him in person so uh -huh. that I can see his reaction. So I got to run and tell him before the podcast comes out. <laughs> oh, so. does he live out here? Or he oh, yeah. He's, so he's my one of my best friends that I uh, met when I went to college okay. uh, in Minnesota. But he lives out here now. And okay. I went to... Uh, I'm sorry, I keep hitting the mic. So yeah, I met him in Minnesota. It's funny that you mentioned college in Minnesota because that's a great segue for what we're, for your next next obsession that we're about to get into. I wonder what that could be. Yes, right after we come back from this quick break. Awesome. Cool. What people don't realize is that our ancestors were revolutionaries. So if you have Haitian blood running through your veins, you too have the DNA of revolutionaries. The revolution will not be televised, but it will be streaming. You just heard a snippet of the six-part docuseries, Audacity of Host, which explores the Haitian-American experience of Motown Maurice. You don't want to miss it. Audacity of Host is streaming now on Tubi. For more information, visit MotownMaurice.com. Sakase! We're back! Are you excited? I am excited. I'm <laughs> excited because I got some of this drink. Oh, and what are you drinking? I'm drinking an Atara special. <laughs> in her kitchen, she had the wisdom, grace, and kindness to blend in her $500 juicer <laughs> some fabulous and absolutely refreshing pineapple ginger. It's delicious. <laughs> we just call it tropical. They're tropical. Tro tropical fruit. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. <laughs> and my husband actually turned me on to these. Um, Cause he loves ginger. Like ginger is his secret baby mama, and oh. so he loves it. He likes raw ginger, ginger candy, all the ginger. I don't know if he likes ginger candy. Now that I think about it, he's just like if if I'm cooking something that there's gonna be ginger in it, it's like pour I'm it, pour it on. I'm going to um, give you a couple pieces of this ginger candy that we have, Ooh, so you can take it back yeah. to him and get his opinion. Okay, thank you, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. So yes. You're gonna get a nice little care package today. Some little you are that you are ginger candy and some ginger the juice sample. I so. appreciate that. Thank you. And I oh, and I also have to give him a shout out too because he is the reason I got to meet Chris Summer. So at this like club that he goes to, uh, which is really cool. One of the bartenders. Oh, I know where you're talking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the bartenders <laughs> works there, um, and. Uh, had mentioned to him about the event. And so he was like, oh, you should go. It's probably fun. I was like, ah, I don't really know. And he was like, no, I think one of us should really go. Take your cousin. And so he was like really instrumental and was like, go, go. I think you'll have a good time. You'll have a good time. And so he was like, when he, like, I guess when my cousin saw that he was there, somehow he communicated with her. Like, mm -hmm. She sees her, okay, make her go talk to her and oh. or something like that. But my cousin was already doing it when she realized, like, oh, she's here. Corey <laughs> loves her. And then they was, like, texting and plotting. Plotting so, to make you. So, yeah, he's awesome. Your Cree summer moment. 
<laughs> I love her so much. Okay, so well, well we're going to get into some more moments that yes. you've had with this next obsession. Oh, my God. The Golden Girl. Oh, <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> it is. And I, I, I will say, I watched The Golden Girls too. Yes. And, you know, if I was flipping through the channels and it was an episode and I had already seen the episode and maybe it was like 20 minutes left, I would still go ahead and watch it. Yeah. But I'm not obsessed like you are. And that's okay. We all, <laughs> we all have our level of golden love. Okay. That's true. That's true. We're all golden to some exactly. level. Exactly. Everyone's golden. Um, yeah. So this ensemble that I'm wearing is a Golden Girls inspired frock <laughs> that I ordered online. It's giving 19. It's very blanche. Yes. Oh, girl, it's very honey, child, with please. the shoulders out, little shimmy. Shoulder. Yeah, very blanche. How yes. did you? So when you started watching Golden Girls, were you watching it because like your mom was watching it, or our aunt was watching it, or you just? Okay, good question. So my uh, my grandma Barbara, when I was a little girl, it's so random that I remember this. I was probably like nine, seven. I don't know how old. She, they have this. Her, and my grandpa had this little TV in the kitchen. They still have a little TV in the kitchen. It's just a flat little screen now. But anyway, <laughs> this little TV in the kitchen, and I see the show. And I was like, this is so funny. And I'm like, but this woman is loose. I don't think I should be watching this. And that was Blanche. And I was loose. like, but this is, <laughs> I was like, but this is so funny. But I'm like, I don't think this is appropriate for me, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of kept that in the back of my mind. And then in high school, I want to say like my, it was, it was my junior year. I'm watching Lifetime, right? And all of a sudden the Golden Girls comes on. And I'm like, oh, that's that show that I liked when I was a little kid. I'm like, well. I can watch it now. I'm a grown up. I'm 16 <laughs> years old. And so I started watching it and it was just like, this is all I want to do for the rest of my life is watch the show. And so I watched the Golden Girls like religiously. It was to the point where, first off, you couldn't call our house past 10 o'clock. That was a rule that my mom had. Mm -hmm. But if you were one of my few friends who was allowed to call past 10, don't call Corey at 11 o'clock my senior year of high school because I'm watching the Golden Girls. Because it used to come on at like 8 and they would do like a couple episodes and then mm -hmm. it was like on at 11. And it was like, like legit, I kept it on repeat to the point where um, when I was a kid, my dad would record The Simpsons on VHS because that's our... I could talk all day about The Simpsons. <laughs> Me and my dad danced to do the Bartman at my wedding. Like, that is my other show. Oh, you're so funny. It's so great. But the Golden Girls, um, so I would, like, r record the Golden Girls and King of the Hill randomly. Um, and I recorded it so much to the point where I had, like, about, I want to say, six or eight VHSs that I took with me to college um, when I went <laughs> off to school. Because it was just, it was one of those shows where I'm like, it's, freaking hilarious. It is, um, it is pretty funny. It's it's so funny. Like, and I have, so the, random side note, my dad and my mom have pointed out that I have a love for old people. I don't know what it is. I love the elderly babies. I mean, they cool, whatever. But give me a nice old person. I'm like, <laughs> mm, I just want to hug you, abuelitas. <laughs> but so to see like feisty old broads who were like boning, didn't know you could do that past like 60, was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, it was, it's great. Like, just to see these fun, confident women who were so different from each other. And it kind of like reminded me of like my own friend group, um, my, my group of girls, like in junior high and high school, I still have the same friends that I had from junior high school till now. Like you're so wholesome. <laughs> like, my gosh. Those are my girls. I just so you connected with the golden yeah. girls. So you were like, were you seeing yourself in them? Were you connecting to them? You How know, were you connecting to them? It's funny because as I'm talking to you right now, I just realized across that I connected with the Golden Girls is also like my one of my other favorite shows, Living Single. In the sense of like, you have, because to me, Max is Blanche, Khadijah is Dorothy, Rose is Sinclair. Oh my God, you're Sophia blowing is my Regine. mind right now. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Max is Blanche. Yes. Some might say it's Regine. No, no, no. Because Regine ain't the horny one. Max is down for a good time. Yeah. Now, Regine is a little more the sophistication of Blanche. So you could make it a blend of those two. Right. But, yeah. Max, oh my God, body goals. I wanted her body so Legit. Bad. 
Oh my god. Legit. But I guess you could also and you could also switch Max and Sophia because Max is super funny and yeah. Sophia yeah. is a super funny. So they so I think they both flip. shows yeah. had uh you could see the different characters represented amongst yes. the people in both shows. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it really made me think of, it's funny because it almost makes me want to cry because Max makes me think of my homegirl Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Like they look alike, they're hilarious alike, but it, it definitely was like seeing myself in these characters and like the sweetness of like Rose, like makes me think of like my buddy Courtney and mm -hmm. um, Jessica makes me think of Dorothy because she's like, very smart and quick and just just all the different ways and then even my college friends like I literally like see because my for, so speaking of college you're right I was just about to say <laughs> I went to St. Olaf College okay this is the other thing that I just find like you know those ladies really didn't go to St. Olaf College okay right? okay so technically <laughs> technically so Betty White's character Rose went lived in a fictional town called St. Olaf and the legend has it that the fictional town um, of St. Olaf was created because one of the show writers went to Carleton College. <laughs> Carleton College is St. Olaf's <laughs> enemy school. So the so the college is real. The college Saint is real, but the town is Saint, fake. Is fake. Yes, and so he, and you decided to go to St. Olaf because a fictional character. Yes. Who you're obsessed with? Yes. Went there. She's from that town. She didn't go to from the she, town that doesn't exist. Exactly. I think she, I think her character went, went to, to the, the University of Gustav, Gustav. I think. I don't think she went to Saint Olaf College on the show because they mention it. <laughs> but yeah, um, and yeah, Goose Davis. There's actually a, a universe, a college of Goose Davis, and that's where I think Betty White's character went to. But anyway, side note. Yeah, that's why I went because. So this is the thing. So my best. My dog, Alexis, that's my girl. <laughs> like, I met her and I, we actually went to elementary school together and then high school together. And so we're still like, that's my best friend. Uh, see, I, I'm going to mention several best friends. <laughs> Everyone I've named, I'm do like, Do they know that they're friends. all your best friends? So they do know, but everyone knows that, like, I'm kind of, if we want to talk obsession, my husband tells me that I'm obsessed with Alexis because I am just a little bit. Like, I'm. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with her. Like, she's pretty awesome. But all my friends are awesome. I don't have trash friends. That's why I love you guys, because you guys are awesome. I don't keep trash people in my life. No, thank you. Basuda she, she stays over I'm there. She means I'm awesome. You're awesome by proximity. You <laughs> she won't even let me have the compliment. <laughs> you take it. Take it off. Mo is awesome. Because I got to meet you because of him. So that's what makes... So see, Mo oh, keeps okay. awesome people so that's what in makes his you life. awesome, too. Yep, see all the things. <laughs> he knows that he keeps, he, you keep good people in your life too. Okay. I try. Yeah. Believe me, I try. <laughs> it can be hard. I love it. Um, so but, when you went to St. Olaf College, uh -huh. did you have any friends that went with you or you went on your nah, own? No, I was all alone. And I, yeah, so this. I, 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 that doesn't surprise me because if you had been like, hey, Atara Bestie, go with me to St. Olaf girl, College, I would have been like, no. No. So, and I also blame Alexis. So I didn't even know St. Olaf existed. She told me about the college and she was like, well, since you like the Golden Girls, you should apply to St. Olaf. And I was like, they have a school? And so then I <laughs> I literally applied as like a joke and I got in. And then when I got in, they were like, hey, we need black people at our college. You make good grades and you're smart and we have certain scholarships. Take that dough, girl. What did you study? Uh, women's studies and theater. So um, when you were walking the halls of St. Olaf College, did were you like thinking, oh, um, not Betty, but... Yeah, it was Rose. Rose. Rose went here. Did you think that well, to yourself? So because I knew that the town was fake, yes and no. Because she actually did visit the campus at one point. Oh, because okay. the show was so big, she did actually visit the school. So I can say that I breathed the same illustrious Minnesota air that Betty White breathed <laughs> at some point. So not only were you obsessed with the Golden Girls. Yes. You're real. So. so let me ask you this. Did you're obsessed? Okay. So not only were you obsessed with the Golden Girls, you're obsessed with Betty White. I love her so much. Which came first? Like, were you obsessed with Betty White because of the Golden Girls? So it, yes. It, what it was is I actually liked her 
before I started really, really getting into the Golden Girls because like there was, I can't even remember the other things that I would see her in because she would always have like play funny old lady roles and mm -hmm. stuff. And so I liked her and stuff that I saw, but then watching the Golden Girls, it was like, oh, she's the bomb. That's what it was. Um, ooh, sorry. Um, the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Oh. She plays. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, she plays a tramp on the Mary Tyler yes. Moore Show. Which is why she didn't want to play. She was initially up for the part of Blanche. Um, but I think it's like Suzanne Nivens or Nivel. So I'm getting the name wrong. Um, and she didn't want to play that character again. So then um, Bla uh, Rue oh, McCallaghan. Oh, you mean Tramp as in like a loose woman. I thought you meant Tramp. As like, like a hobo? Yeah. No, no. She, she was a floozy and a scallywag on that show. But she did such a good job of being a floozy and a scallywag. Um, and then... Girl, what like language are you speaking? It's the Archie comics. <laughs> no, like legit. Like, okay, they don't use the words floozy and scallywag in Archie comics, but they use a lot of old stuff because I read the digest and it's the, the usually it's from like the 50s through the 80s and 90s and now are the, the bits and pieces that they take from it. I can't even imagine calling someone a tramp these days. Like... Because the lady is a I tramp. I was just about to say, she just likes to get it in. I mean, there we, but see, that just sounds so crass. <laughs> tramp is clean and to the point. Oh or floozy. That gives it a little more razzm attack. Floozy. <laughs> exactly. You almost feel a little proud to call yourself a floozy. Or a loose woman. But that's okay. Either way, you do what you want to do with your own body because it's yours, girl. But yeah. Hashtag. You need to put a hashtag in front right. of that. Hasht everything is hashtag ha these days. Hashtag. You, hashtag do what your, your, you do what you want to do with your own body because it's yours, girl. Floozy. And you forget, oh, and period. Yes. All those things. <laughs> and more. And that's why I love Blanche. That's why I love all of them. Because see, here's the thing that people be sleeping on. Like on the show... They make it seem like Blanche was the only one like doing it. All of them. All of the, they were all doing that. It's just all. Blanche owned it. Yes. And that's the problem. Yes. Today. Yes. Like if you want to get it in, get it in and yeah. don't be ashamed about it. Yeah. And and the other thing that I love is because Blanche would do it with just like anybody. Well, not anybody. She was picky, but it was she was picky with a lot of people. With Rose and them. <laughs> she was picky with a lot of people. Yeah, she was picky. She was just, I should say she was just picking a lot of them who she was picky with, okay? With Rose and Blanche and Sophia, I mean, Rose, Dorothy, and Sophia, they were sleeping with people. It was just like they you would think have a Sophia boyfriend. was sleeping with people? Oh, she totally was. So there's an episode where it's his name is Tony Govecchio, where it's this guy, this old man. Um, and Dorothy tells her, Ma, I told you keep both feet on the floor when you go out with him. And Blanche dresses her up. She, oh, It's the greatest line ever. She, So Sophia's coming out of the room because Blanche is dressing her. And she says, I took an 80-year-old woman and turned her into a 50-year-old drag queen. Oh and she comes God. out in this red dress and all this makeup. And her, it's, it's just the greatest. But they didn't have them sleep around a ton. It was just when they had a boyfriend, it was like, within the next episode or something, or it was real quick when they were sleeping no with No three month rule. Yeah, no, not at all. What what are three months? When you're 972 years old, you ain't got three months to wait. <laughs> you don't. When you're 50, you don't got three months to Look, wait. Look, that part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, it's it's definitely, it's, ugh, it's just the best. I do miss that show. That's another one of those shows that's like worry free. Yes. You know, everything on television yeah. now is like, Oh, I'm gonna get evicted because the rent's late. Mm. You, know, you know, my 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 child's father didn't show up for some mm -hmm. reason or another, or I don't know. It's always some like it's too realistic. Can yeah. we just because I watch television or I watch TV or movies or whatever to escape reality? Yes, you know. Yes, and that's why I tend to stick to fantasy these days because that it's makes totally sense. not realistic at all. That makes a lot of sense. At least not on this plane that we're right. on. You were talking about earlier, you are talking about interdimensional something Dude, There's dimensions all over, man. Different exactly. stuff is happening everywhere. Somewhere, someplace, there's this conversation <laughs> happening right now. Probably. Think but about it, I'm sister. you and you're me. There we go. Speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs>
And I understand one of your kids is named after one of the Golden Girls. Yes. So my youngest daughter, well, I, I love how I said youngest daughter when I only have one daughter. I have, a, I have a little boy and have a little girl. So my youngest child who is my daughter. Yes, her name is Sophia. And it is spelled with a PH. And yes, it is because of Sophia Petrillo. I named my little black child on an old <laughs> fictional white woman. Well, that's yes, what I, I love about you is that you're able to like identify with these women. I love them so much. Who okay, so people think like you can only identify with someone who like looks from you, looks like you, is from the same culture, yeah. speaks the same language. But I th we recently had another episode where I was talking a lot about humanity, mm -hmm. which I think is really missing in the world. Yeah. But this is the epitome of what is, you know, what humanity is, is being able to look at someone else from a completely different culture, yeah. completely different place and yeah. see yourself and yes. identify it. Like why? Because we're all at the core we're all human beings. One hundred percent. You know. I love you for that, man. So it's just really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So okay. So here's the thing. Thank you. Thank you for that. that <laughs> I love how you said that. You made it so much deeper than um, how I've been seeing her name. But yes, exactly. It's because of humanity, Sophia. That's why I named you that. We're joining <laughs> things, people together. But I wanted to name her Sophia Rose, and my husband was like, "No, we're not." I was gonna say, you like, how come you didn't name her Betty or Rose? Yeah, and and I'm kind of so I'm not mad, but I recently saw someone post because I'm part of this like Golden Girls fan group on Facebook, oh, where <laughs> and an Archie fan Facebook, but classic Archie fan okay, group okay. only Amer classic Americana uh, only. basically just okay. just the classics um but where um someone had named their daughter like um Betty Rose and I was like that's such a pretty name it is it's a really pretty name um but so it's funny because you mentioned the my daughter being named that the kids know about the show but they call it the grandmas <laughs> so like if I'm watching it and I'm like they're like we it's our turn to watch tv so they'll get their cartoons which I watch with them because I love their cartoons. Bluey is banging, by the way. My niece loves Bluey. It's so loves good. Bluey. Oh. So wait, you said my turn. You guys only have one TV in the house? Yeah, so we just have one TV in the house. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, we just have one TV. They don't have tablets or anything? No, no, wow. no, no. Well, first off, they're only five and four. Oh, so, well... And, you know, and for some people, it works for them. For yeah. some people, their kid having a tablet. And I, I can definitely see how helpful that that can be. And, a, like, one of my really, really good friends, her daughter, um, our daughters are the same age. And she has a tablet. And that little girl is smart as a whip. Mm -hmm. You know, she's learned so much off her tablet. So there's a lot of benefits to it. But I know for myself, I'm very, if I look at a screen too long, I get a headache. Mm -hmm. I start feeling kind of icky. Um and I just, I know that it that there's benefits, but I also know that there can be like detriments to it. So mm -hmm. I just prefer with my kids, they don't have their own personal tablets. Now, will I let my son play with my phone sometimes? Yes. You know, every now and then he'll like get to play a game on my phone. Um, currently I have three games that I have to erase because I forgot that he had my phone. And I was like, why do I have Scrabble and this and that on there? <laughs> so, you know. But yeah, in our house, we just have um, the one TV. And my husband was really smart. He put it on rollers. So we'll, we have it in the living room, but we'll roll it into the bedroom and have like movie night. Oh, and so the kids fun. will climb in bed with us and we'll watch it. Or the other day I had them, um, uh, where like sometimes we'll like do put an inflatable mattress in the living room or something. Oh, so that, yeah. You know, have it like that. But, but yeah, so they'll watch their shows. And then... When it's mommy's turns, they know it's either Bob's Burgers or it's the Golden Girls. And what's really cool, you had said about the Golden Girls, how it's lighthearted. And it is. And that's one of the things that I love about it. Also with like Archie's, I could just like go off into my own little world and their fashions are amazing. Like, but apparently Blanche's room McCallahan had written in her contract that she would get to keep the clothing from the show. Really? Yeah, girl. And so her estate auctioned off like her stuff. Now, I don't know if they auctioned all of it. But if I had all the coins in the world, I would buy the robe that she wears throughout the series. That which is, pink satin robe. Yeah. Just yeah. It, that pink satin one. And she has another one that's like, um, and I don't even know, it's it's like a like floral kind of print looking thing. Or it, maybe I'm mixing it with the pink no, satin one. No, it was kind of like blues and mm -hmm. pinks and peaches. Yes, that yeah. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, but one of the things that I loved about or love about the show 
is how seamlessly, especially for a show that was like in the late 80s, early 90s, they wove in like some controversial stuff. Like there's an episode where they talk about AIDS because Rose um, gets a letter from her um, doctor, her hospital saying that this transfusion she had a couple years ago, it might have been mixed with blood that had AIDS antibodies because at the time they didn't know it. So she needed to get tested. Wow. And it's really good. Like, um, and they, how she has to like, go get tested. And then she doesn't realize that she doesn't get the results for three days. And Sophia doesn't want to drink any cups that she knows Rose drank out of. And all these, like the different prejudices that you think of with AIDS and Rose has this really great monologue where she's, well, it's not a monologue, but she's like, you know, how could this happen to me? I'm a goody two shoes. Something mm -hmm. like this should happen to you, Blanche. And Blanche mm -hmm. is like, like, no, like AIDS isn't a bad people's disease. It's not God punishing people for their sins. Mm -hmm. Like, it's what happens. And it's all that. And Rose is like, you're right. I'm sorry. But it's it was done in such a good way that it was like, oh, shoot. Like it. A natural way. Yes. It's kind of like if someone who actually thinks that and they're watching this, it would the realization would sneak up yes. on them that the way they're thinking is incorrect. Exactly. Yeah. It was so good they did that. And then <laughs> I love Blanche. So there's an episode where her brother comes to visit her brother, Clayton. Um, and he comes out to her and uh, it's just hilarious because she's like, well, I, I I never thought you'd be gay. Like, you're just like me. And she starts describing herself and him. And he's like, irresistible to men. Yes. And she's like, <laughs> I was about to say, now they could go out together. Look, <laughs> legit. And just like her, where at the end, it wasn't as if they had this happy moment. And she's like, okay, brother, it's fine. She was like, it's going to take me a while to get used to this, but I love you, which is real and honest. Yeah. And like how she's like, I got these prejudices, but I got, I got to work through them because it's, it was one of those things where for her, it was like, it's okay for everybody else, but you're my brother. And so she had to work through that. And I love that they mm -hmm. show how the character's will have opinions different from our own, but can learn and grow and have their prejudices and have their thoughts. But that's part of what makes us wonderfully flawed and human mm -hmm. and realizing that just because you think a certain way, don't treat people bad because yeah. of it, figure it out. Yeah. Um, or you don't so, have yeah. to be enemies with someone who doesn't think yes, the same, exactly. same thing as you, you know? I love it. Yeah. That really was a good show. It's such a good show. And it still comes on. It still comes oh, on. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's on Hulu. If you have if you have Hulu, mm -hmm. it's on Hulu. Um, it also is on, I think, I'm pretty sure it still comes on. Yeah, it does still come on Lifetime at night. I just, like you, I don't have cable now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, I know it's on Hulu. I don't know what other platforms it's on. I'll, I'll but have to find it. I would like to check out an episode. I, it's great. Yeah. It's so great. It's also a good show to just have on in the background. like 100%. Yeah, if you're just doing other things because it's familiar. Yes. Yeah, those familiar voices. Yes. Yeah. And what's cool, this is my random side note about it. There's a lot of random guest stars in there. Quentin Tarantino is on an episode. Really? Yes. He plays it. I saw your face in the background, Motown. Yes. He plays an Elvis impersonator without any lines. There's an episode where, and I clocked it, where, Ro, where Sophia gets married to... Her best friend who's died's husband, Scandal. I know, girl. <laughs> so um, Rose accidentally switches the invitations um, for the wedding invitations to uh, these Elvis impersonator in invitations because they've got like this Elvis fan club and they mm -hmm. were like trying to hire folks. And so there's like all these Elvis impersonators at their wedding. And Quentin Tarantino is like doing this dance and it's really odd and awkward, but it's hilarious. So he's in there. Mario Lopez is on an episode of The Golden Girls. <laughs> Um, Bob Hope is on it. Like they just, they constantly, they have, of course, well-known stars for the time. Mm -hmm. And then you see people who it's like, oh, child, that was your come up right there. Okay. <laughs> that's so funny. Yes. That's it, it's yeah. Great. That's, you know, it's great. So I know Betty, I know she left us. When did she leave yes. us? Yes. So Betty White went to be with the Lord. And, and I, I hate that I'm going to get the year wrong. I want to say 2021. Mm -hmm. It was, I'm pretty sure it was December of 21 because it was right before her 100th birthday. So it was either 21. Because it, it was I, during the lockdown. I didn't realize it was so. Recent. It maybe it was. And, and that's and that's the other thing is because of this lockdown, my time, my sense of time is like mm, really too. messed up. So it might have been in 2019, but I don't think it was, but it could have been. Mm -hmm. All I know is my girl gone. But hopefully she's with her husband, Alan Ludd, Ludd, Ludden, which is, and that's another reason I love her. 
So another reason I love her is because of how much her, he was actually her third husband. Yeah, girl. Okay. Oh, come on, Betty. <laughs> um, uh, her, their love story was just so sweet. And like when you look at pictures of them, it's just like all this love. And what I learned is he died right before, oh, right before she started doing the Golden Girls. And her, oh. ca- yes, and her character on the show Listen. lost her husband suddenly. Now her, now Betty White's husband had, um, he had cancer, mm-hmm. but on the show, uh, Rose's character lost her husband and she's like crazy about him. And there's this monologue that she does. Um, it's a, it's one of those like, you know where they do clip show episodes of shows, but it's not with the Golden Girls, what they would do, which was awesome is they would have a clip show, but it wasn't of actual previous episodes. It would be like new things that they would like make up and put it together. Mash like it a together. Clip show. Yeah. I think yeah. they did that with Seinfeld once. Okay. Something. Yeah. So, and she is like giving this monologue where it's her birthday and she's talking to her, her deceased husband and telling him like, you know, I want to move to Minnesota. I heard some really great things about Miami because um, it's as if it's flashing back to before she gets there. Mm-hmm. And just the... Betty White is an amazing actress. Mm-hmm. And really watching that as an actress is like, oh, dang. Like, it's not just all fun and games with her. It's mm-hmm. like you're about to see like her heart like legit out there. And yeah. she takes this breath at the end. And it's like just seeing her range... And just how, like, she, like, takes you through so many different emotions. And it's just effortless. I appre- It's like I really appreciate her as an actress. I sometimes wonder how actresses and actors like that who are able to take you through the emotional range mm-hmm. and have it feel free. Mm-hmm. I mean, have it feel real. Like, yeah. Real How free. do they recover? So... It's funny you say that. And now I'm going to give a shout out to Fred Ponslov, the greatest acting teacher on the face of the earth. That's right. The Fred Ponslov. He's this acting teacher that he moved and left me. He's in New Mexico and I wish he was out here again because I love him so much. But one of the things that he taught us that he learned from the Meisner technique of acting is that when you act, you... It, the backstory has to be real, but you use imaginary situations to get you there. So I'll give an example. Let's say... I'm doing um, a play. And in this play, I play a character who was beaten by their father, okay? And let's say in real life, my father actually beat me in real life. Mm -hmm. You should not, I should not use my mind and my memory to think about when my father beat me to give a monologue about my parent beating me. But instead, you create for your character what did they actually go through, what happened with them, and you make take take their reality and make it through that character. So you use your character's backstory. Yes, and you create a backstory for your character. So like... If and what one of the things that he taught us, which is awesome, is like, um, let's say with I'll just take Betty White's character, Rose. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she was given background on what her character is, but she probably also decided the, you know, she was raised on a dairy farm. Did she like the dairy farm? What were the animals that she had there? Who were her best friends growing up? What is she so all this stuff that you make for this person? How did she how did you meet your husband? What was the first time you guys kissed? Mm-hmm. So that when you get into that headspace you can actually really you because you it's weird because i once he taught me that technique i would add, i will i legit will like write out the year that my character be was that born. person yes You're all that becoming stuff. that person yes and so you can't become that person if you there's no backstory exactly and so you have to create that person's backstory exactly in order to be them and so then when you are them in that moment you're feeling real legit emotions it's the truth coming out mm-hmm. but then when you're done you can step out of it because it's not your actual lived experience even if you dealt with something that's someone that's similar to what your character is you don't tap into that actual memory of your own to get those dark emotions because that's hard to get out of yeah but creating it for the other character you can take yourself out later on yeah um that makes a lot of sense yeah. um that makes a lot of sense yeah. so but yeah and i also learned a lot of like with the voiceover acting i have another great teacher and ganguza um <laughs> she's awesome i don't know um, why i laugh she's every great. time you look at the camera like that i love looking at the camera by the way clearly um, and so <laughs> she um she's this voiceover teacher who has taught me a lot about like creating character and like 
like literally like drawing out the character that mm. you have for this voice that you want to do and making a backstory for them and then like how to keep it consistent. I need to take classes with her again. She is still in California. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's all that stuff. So I got I got to give Mo his shout out because when Betty White passed away, I actually had multiple people call and text me and ask, are you okay? How are you doing? Because they knew like that's, that's my grandma. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm okay. And I, the reason I was okay is because of your, the episode that I did with you, because I actually got to talk about my obsession with her and get it out in the ether, how much I love her. Because it was, it was more that I had previously mourned not acting with her when she was like retired mm -hmm. and being able to talk about wanting to work with her and stuff on your show helped so much for that. So thank you. Um, Cause all the girls are, are goldening in the sun now. Mm, they're goldening um, in the golden. Right? <laughs> they they just they stay golden. But yes, thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's 36 for 36. Motown, where can they find that? It's on YouTube. 36 for 36 and Corey's name, K-O-R-I. And it's on the Late Night Experiment YouTube channel. Yeah. I've awesome. actually watched them all. So, oh, you're good. Yeah, I've watched them all because it's an interesting group of people. It really is. And I enjoy people's stories, which is another reason I'm doing this podcast. So, awesome. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Aww, and you're yours, great. Is, yours is fun too. It's nice Thank and fun. You. I tried. I loved it. I appreciate you. So, Corey, if people want to find you because they may also have a love or obsession with Betty White and Golden Girls and Archie, and they want to Bring collaborate on, and they yes. want to talk to you. Where can they find you? So I am on the Instagram at starring Corey Denise. That's S-T-A-R-R-I-N-G-K-O-R-I-D-E-N-I-S-E. I hope that's how I spelled it. <laughs> starring Corey Denise. Starring um, Corey Denise. Yes. And it's a right now it's a picture of me with like a scarf on my head um, and probably nothing else. So when I say I'm like, a 78 year old woman with only one finger. I mean it. I don't know how to do the Instagrams and all that stuff. I just tap, tap, tap. So there's not a lot of content up, but I'm trying to put more up. But people can still DM you. They exactly. can slide in your DMs. Slide in DMs, boo, but I'm a married woman and I love my husband. But slide in, <laughs> but not like that. I'm no Blanche. But Blanche was actually very faithful to her husband. Anyway, that's another time of Golden Girls talk. <laughs> Speaking of Blanche, you have on a very Blanche's Blanche outfit. I do declare. Thank you. You know, when I think of that show, I always think of, all I can remember is Moo Moo's. Lots of like flowing clothing. Yes, everything was flowing. Everything was flowing. And I think Blanche, she would wear flowy stuff, but she always had her shoulders out. Yeah. you Look, there is nothing worse than wasting a beautiful deglotage. If you got it, baby. Deglotage. Just. Explain that what that is. For so the that's your clavicle right here. Like, so <laughs> <laughs> if there is anything that the women on both sides of my family have, we got nice legs and girl, we got some sexy clavicles. <laughs> so that decolletage, if you How's just, mine? What do you think of my decolletage? See, can I tell you, it's lovely. You've got the beautiful skin right there and you can see just enough bone structure to where it's, you know, it's, it's just like- It's not too padded? No, no, not at all. No. Look, and, not, and nothing, nothing wrong with a little extra meat both in the seat and where it attracts <laughs> all the heat, okay? Like just- I have started moisturizing down here too Th that's the key because yeah. people and that's one of the things my mother and my grandmother taught me is you just you, if when you do the facial loss first you do it upwards yeah because it's like, like it keeps the skin going up and taut and you make sure to get all in the deglutage and this oh, dress, and the it just, <laughs> <laughs> and this dress is my golden girls inspired because it has the um the print, the yeah, Miami print. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. got the, the yeah. so I'm swirling back and forth like a little kid. <laughs> All right, folks. So if you're looking for Corey Denise, you know where to find hey. her on Instagram at starring Corey Denise. Yes, please do. And do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so you never have to miss a single episode of Sip and Chat Cafe. You pretty girl, you so good. You so good. Girl, no, you. I love you so you much. the best, girl. You the best. Girl. You the best. No, you the best. You the best. You the best. We both the best. We both the best. We the bestest. Yes, girl, we the best.
the bestest. We, we, the bestest. We, the bestest. <laughs> You're welcome, Motel. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>